Hello everyone, here we talk about the discrete random variable. If all the possible values for a random variable are countable, the random variable is called discrete random variable. In other words, if we can list all the possible values for a random variable, this situation is called countable. Countable can be limited or unlimited. For example, if we try to observe the attendance in the class and that class has only 40 students on the list. So the observation turned out if we try to observe this class attendance every week so the possible result could be the number between 0 and the 40. This is a limited situation. But if we try to observe how many phone calls we can receive from telephone during the day. We may receive no phone calls, we may receive one, two, we may receive hundred, we may receive thousand. Technically speaking, this is an unlimited situation. But no matter which situation, they are all countable. If a random variable x represents how many people come in the shopping mall in a day, the possible number of people is countable. So random variable x is discrete. If a random variable x represents the height of a person who come in the shopping mall in a day, the possible height could be any value, probably from half meter to 2 meters. In this case, the possible height is not countable. The possible height may fill up an interval between 0 0.5 meters and 2 meters. This kind of situation, if the possible value is a filling up an interval, the random variable is called a continuous, so it is not discrete random variable. Let's look at a typical example. We do experiment, tossing three coins and check the number of the hands showed up after the experiment. We use a random variable x to represent how many hands may show up after the experiment. There are a total three coins, so possibly no head shows up. We may observe one head shows up, two heads, or three heads showing up after the experiment. So we can list all the possible values for x. 0, 1, 2, 3. We can also get the probability for every possible value in the table above. That is the classical situation. We can figure out the classical probability by counting possible outcomes for each event and the total possible outcomes for this experiment. Here we go. 1 out of 8. This much chance to observe no head. A 3 out of 8. This much chance to observe one head. And 3 out of 8 to observe two heads as well. And 1 out of 8. We can observe all of three coins show up. 
this table with all the possible values and the corresponding probabilities is called the probability distribution for random variable x. Generally, if a discrete random variable has the possible value x1, x2, x3, until xn, and then we also know the corresponding probability for the random variable taking each individual value. So we can list them all together in the table. Here's the probability distribution can be described in this table. And we can also use mathematical expression. So the probability x equals xi, that means i's value. Or we directly use pxi, that represents the probability x take the value xi. And the corresponding probability being labeled as lowercase pi. So this one expression represents all. For discrete random variable probability distribution, this table carried some potential feature. First, only the values listed in the table are possible values for the random variable x. Any other value is not possible. Or we can say the probability for random variable x taking any other value is 0. Random variable x can only take any individual value listed in the table, but cannot take any two different values together. They are mutually exclusive. Next, every probability in this table should be between 0 and 1. This is a basic fact for probability. The last one, all the probabilities in the table together should be 1 or 100%. If a discrete random variable has the probability distribution like this, what we mentioned, we can also simply get the average value for the random variable and the standard deviation for the random variable by using all the information in the table. Here's the former, mu, or ex, capital E, represents expectation average value or mean uh, also called expectation or mathematical expectation so the calculation is we use every possible value multiply corresponding probability and add all the products together that will give us the average value and then we use the square of the difference of every individual value to the center value or average value. Multiply corresponding probability and then add all the products together and then we do the square root. This would give us the standard deviation of this random variable. Standard deviation, we can also use the capital D to represent. Here's the example. Random variable x has the probability distribution below. We try to answer the following questions. Part A. How much chance the random variable would be at least 25? So that is the probability of the event. Event is x greater or equal 25. In this table, we can see at the list of 25, this event including 25, 35, 50, 55, and 80. And we can add all these five corresponding probabilities together to get the answer. But we do have shortcut. 
Since all the probabilities in the table together should be one, so we can simply use one minus p ten. Ten is the only situation being excluded out. That's the only case x smaller than twenty five. So the answer is ninety nine percent chance for x to be at least twenty five. Part B. Probability x equal thirty five. The value is clearly listed in the table, so we can give the answer right away: three percent for x to be thirty five. Next one. What's the probability x equals forty five? When we look at the table, we do not see forty five being the value listed in the table. That means forty five is not a possible value for x. So in that case, the probability x equals forty five is zero. That is the basic understanding about the probability distribution. Next part D. Probability x equals ten and x equals thirty five. Ten and thirty five. They are listed in the table, but we do understand they cannot happen together. They are mutually exclusive. So if we want x equals ten, x equals thirty five together, the probability is zero. Part E, probability x equals ten or x equals thirty-five. X equals ten or x equals thirty-five. We have both probability one percent and three percent. So, or this is inclusive both situations. So we can simply add together. We get four percent to have this event happen. Part F. Probability x is smaller than fifty. When we look at table, smaller than fifty, not including fifty. So fifty is not counted. This case, we have ten, twenty-five, thirty-five. They are considered as smaller than fifty. So we have all these chances put together. The reason we can put them together because they are mutually exclusive. So we get forty-one percent of chance for x being less than fifty, and then we calculate the average value and the standard deviation. We can simply use the formula and use every possible value multiplied corresponding probability, and then we add them together, give the average value or expectation forty-six. When we look at the information. For the question, forty-six is quite reasonable. Sitting in the middle, it's about the middle. We're not saying exactly middle, but that is the average value. It's the center value. If by chance you come out answers less than ten or eighty,、uh, greater than eighty, that definitely is not right. Must be something wrong. Then we calculate standard deviation. Here's our formula, and we have the average of forty-six already. We put them all in, use each individual value minus forty-six, and then we do the square and multiply corresponding probability, and then put them all together, and then we do the square root. The answer is nineteen point seven one. So the meaning for nineteen point seven one, which Is average distance for each individual possible value to the center value forty six. So this is the typical example, covered all the possible situations. Hopefully, from this example, you can fully understand discrete random variable probability distribution and the related features. Here we can also show you the process. Finding mean and the standard deviation in Excel. So we copy the data about the discrete random variable probability distribution into 
Excel worksheet. So the first row, we have the possible value for x. The second row, we have all the corresponding probabilities. And then all we need to do, use each individual value, multiply the corresponding probability. Since they all have the same format, so we can just autofill. Everything is done. And all we need to do is the sum. Add them together. This give us mean. So we find average value 46. So you can see how convenient it is. Then we can continue working on standard deviation. We use each individual value, subtract average value, and then do square, and multiply corresponding probability. So we can pick up the corresponding probability, multiply, bracket, in individual value, subtract, here's individual value, subtract average value. Since we are going to subtract average value from the same cell, so we can have it fixed with the dollar sign. So in that case, we can do the auto filling after. So this part finish, and then we do the auto filling. All done, and then we do the sum. So this one give us this random variable, which is virus. With this number, we know the relationship. We just need to do one more step. Square root of this number going to give us a standard deviation. So you pick up this number, do the square root. Square root means half exponent. This is our standard deviation. 19.71 it is very convenient to use excel to do all the mathematical function and statistical functions see you next time